Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Patches if you are new here, if you are a returning guest, welcome back. Kind of wanted to jump on the bandwagon and do this uh, mid-year freak out tag. Since I am new to booktube, I've never done this before. I'm excited. I wanted to discuss 2020 and the crazy year that it has been, but it has been a very good year for books in my opinion, and I have read some amazing things this year, and I'm very excited about it. Please check out the description below for some more links on how you can support the Black Lives Matter movement that will forever and always be in my description, just so you guys know. One thing I do want to mention is I uploaded a video recently where I was doing my July TBR where I was kind of tying together the Reading Rush and the Coreadathon. So I'm in the midst of doing that right now, um, that vlog. So some of these books or some of these questions, I'm not gonna, I'm going to like throw you at that vlog whenever it comes out because I don't wanna like spoil things for the vlog, but some of these questions definitely will pertain to that vlog whenever it uploads, which hopefully be soon. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm doing a vlog where I am participating in both Readathon, which I know has passed, but I really wanted to participate in it, but also um, the Reading Rush. And I kind of, I think I have like 10 books or so that I'm reading for this vlog, but I'm also, I have deleted all social media off of my phone, um, and I have turned off all notifications and all that for it, so I am not checking social media at all. I haven't been on social media for the past like three or four days, which is weird for me because I'm on social media all the time, and, um, but yeah, I'm... It's going well, I'm very excited, and I cannot wait for you guys to see it. So, let's get into the mid-year freak out. The only thing I'm freaking out about, I think, is how much I have left to read. How much, like, the anticipate, like, what else are you looking forward to? I literally think, like, the last question is, what do you need to read by the end of the year? And I have a stack of, like, 10 books right next to me, and that's just, like, ones that I could see and pull. Um, but we'll start at the beginning. So the first question is, best book you've read in 2020 so far? Um, so there's a couple that I wanted to highlight. I am in the midst of, and this will actually come up later, um, I am almost done with Take a Hint, Danny Brown, and if you know me at all, you know I am not a romance novel person, but this is so good. This is so good. I enjoyed Get a Life, Chloe Brown, but for some reason, this one just sparks a joy in me and I'm reading this for the vlog, but I can't not talk about it. It is such a good book. I'm absolutely loving it. Me and Danny Brown have a matching tattoo that I didn't know about and it's amazing. I love it. She's like, we're soul sisters, you know? I, I'm loving this so far though. I'm absolutely loving this. I'm almost done with it. I'm almost done with it. And I don't see myself like not of being obsessed with this. So. I had to highlight some amazing psychological thrillers, which is my personal favorite genre um, that I have read this year that I'm so excited about. First one is A Good Man by Annie Katz. This is a very short book. It is so creepy, so good, and it's definitely gonna end up on my top 10. It is best that you don't know a whole lot about this before you go into it, but it is basically just about a family and the unfortunate collapse of this family um, and a husband's desperate attempt to keep his family together and in one place. And it's just so good and I'm really wanting to reread it because it is so small and it's it's just, oh, it's, it's, it's so screwed up how much I like this book because it is very sad and very dark. So, and in kind of the same vein as that, this is What Lies Between Us by John Mars. This is the second John Mars that I have uh, read. I discussed this in my, um, quarterly wrap up. I read The Passengers by John Mars, but I didn't love it as much. And I think this is a book that was only released in the UK. And so I had to buy this on Amazon. But again, with this, it's best that you don't know a whole lot about it going into it. There are trigger warnings for abuse in here, but this is such a insane book. It takes you on the wildest of rides. Like you don't think it could get any crazier and it does. It's so good so good. And then last but not least, which is probably my favorite of the year so far, and I'm really dying to reread it whenever I have the chance, is The Body Double by Emily Beta. Um, this is her debut novel. I, at first, didn't love this book. I read it and I was like, that was kind of predictable. I could kind of see the ending coming, but I was just, ultimately, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I think I read this in February or March. Whenever this came out, I read it. And it's, it's, stuck with me ever since and I really want to reread it 
Also, Emily is very nice. I have talked to her on Instagram a couple times just discussing her book. I even saw somebody had a similar tattoo and I was like, oh, hey, Emily looks like your book cover. And she's like, oh my God, it does. So she's very nice. I, I think she's a really fantastic writer. I can't wait to see what else she does. This book is about a woman who is hired to be the public eye of an actress who is, this actress is, is so depressed, she really doesn't want to be seen in the public eye anymore. She just doesn't want to do it. So her manager hires somebody that looks strikingly similar to her to do it for her. And it's such a fantastic, creepy, eerie book and I I love it this is definitely gonna end up my top 10 I definitely want to reread it because I just can't stop thinking about it and I kind of have forgotten parts of it and I just really want to experience that again you know so the best sequel you've read so far in 2020 also goes to I'm not even done with it but I just know but take a hint Danny Brown it's it's so good I I've only read a couple sequels this year not a whole lot though a lot of the sequels I've read have been um romance books and this one is just I really only think of it too so it's kind of hard to say but this one by a long shot this is so good new release you haven't read yet but want to okay there's too many of those so I'm going to there's too many we'll just combine that with the very last question what books do you need to read by the end of the year because we'll just go over my big stack at the end of the video um, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. This one's kind of hard too because I really don't know what else is coming out this year. I haven't really done a whole lot of research on it, but I will say this year I did read finally The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. I did the audiobook for it and it was fantastic. So I'm actually really looking forward to Ruth Ware's other book. I think it's called One by One. It's a bunch of kids up in a cabin in the middle of nowhere, which is like amazing. I'm, I'm here for it. So that's what I'm thinking of right now. Um, biggest disappointment. So there's a couple of things that really disappointed me this year that came out this year that I was looking forward to, and I'll just, I have them somewhere in the room. I moved recently and shit's still just all over the place. So um, The Holdout by Graham Moore was super disappointing. I was looking forward to this book. I mean, I was, I was so upset how much I didn't like this book. Yeah, I really like criminal thrillers and legal thrillers and stuff like that. Is the term legal thrillers, criminal thriller even a thing? Whatever. Um, I was really looking forward to it because it's definitely up my alley, if you will, but it just did not do it for me. I really did not like anything about it. Basically, a black man is on trial for... See, here's the thing, and here's the thing, and I, I almost want to reread it to make sure I am factually correct on why I dislike it, <laughs> but from what I gather in all of the insane true crime podcasts that I read, you can't take somebody to trial unless there is a body. Right? Can someone clarify that for me? I'm pretty sure that's the case. You can't try somebody for like murder if there is no body to say that the, the person was murdered, you know what I mean? Like I don't, so basically this, this black man is on trial because this very rich uh, elite family in I think Los Angeles is like charging this guy for murdering the daughter, but the daughter is nowhere to be found. And so, but it turns out that they were just like dating and the dad was super racist and didn't like that. And it's just like, but it's basically like the jurors who decided he was not guilty got a lot of shit for saying that because everybody's apparently super racist. And we follow this one woman who is now like, I think a lawyer or something like that. I've tried to throw this out of my mind as much as possible, but one of the jurors that she's there with, who is also black, dies and then she's arrested for it. But she's able to like figure out the case on her own. And then it's talking about how she was like, they put handcuffs on me, but I spread my uh, DNA on it so it would tamper with evidence. And I'm like, are we just gonna read about the privilege of this white woman? And like, I, j I just didn't, it didn't work for me. <laughs> I didn't like it at all. And a lot of people did, and I was confused. So that was a big disappointment. <laughs> also, Eight Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson. I was really looking forward to this book also, but it is so predictable. If you really enjoy thrillers, sure, you'd probably like it. But 
not for me dog but a bookstore owner who um wrote a blog post like years ago about um the eight perfect murders based on books that he's read before so he of course talks about agatha christie and blah 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 authors like that like, these are the perfect murders and then those murders start happening so they think that he's doing it and it just fell short for me completely. Okay, so I'm gonna combine the next two ones, which is biggest surprise and favorite new author, debut or new to you. Again, gotta give a shout out to Talia Hibbert. She's just so good. It's just so good. I'm loving this and I can't wait to finish it. I, I put this down to record this video for you guys. Just letting you know, that's how much I love you. She's definitely like hooked me in, man hooked me in. Newest fictional crush. I don't, I'm not about that. Newest favorite character. I also have to shout out the Brown sisters. Like just, there's, there's a get a life Chloe Brown. Chloe Brown's amazing. Danny Brown's amazing. And then Eve Brown, which is coming out spring 2021. I can't wait. I can't wait. I love these characters and I'm so, I'm so excited to just read more about them. Oh, my heart. Um, let's see, books that made you cry. So this one I did talk about in my blog. So I'm not gonna tell you the book. So you could go watch my blog. <laughs> okay, so this one's really screwed up. I'm so sorry. But for a book that made you happy, I honestly have to go with A Good Man. This is such a fucked up book, but it made me happy because it actually went in a direction that like made sense. There wasn't like this crazy, hook where like somebody else was it was just it made me happy because the writing just went in a direction that like oh, it made sense and it was so what's the word vigorating I guess where it was just like oh finally okay this is what this is it just it the pieces literally felt like they landed in places that make sense and I don't know if that makes sense but to me it was like oh, this is what I need in a psychological thriller yes so I turned that into this made me happy because it felt like putting the last piece of a puzzle together and you just look at it and you're like, ah, oh, yes. So most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received. I have to give a shout out to this is beautiful. I am so excited to read this. I ordered this at the beginning of the month and it took a little while to get here, but it's fine. It's fine. I have it now. I'm holding it. It's very nice. I'm so excited. I don't even really know what this book is about. Did I buy this for the cover? Yeah, look at it. I'm so excited to read this. The title, the, the dress, the background, the hair, just the... I'm so excited to read this. And then last but not least, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? There's a lot. So I will just go through the books that I have next to me. Well, We'll go with this, of course. Mexican Gothic, I absolutely need to read. Pick this up recently and I really want to read it. Falling in Love Montage, and I don't know if I'm saying her name right. Kiara Smythe. It's either Kiara Smythe, Kiara Smith, Sierra Smythe, or Sierra Smith. I, I'm sorry, I don't know. And I just, I know somebody with this and it's Smythe, so I'm just, I, uh, it's sapphic, it's beautiful. They're so cute. I just can't wait to read about them. <laughs> So I bought this Beyond Belief by Jenna Miscavige Hill with Lisa Pulitzer and it's My Secret Life Inside Scientology and My Harrowing Escape. So I'm very excited about that. There's like photos in the middle, which I love. I'm a big fan of like these type of true crime books like this. But also, I don't know a whole lot about this author, but I'm pretty sure Miscavige, Miscavige, Miscavige is like the main guy. So I think this is his daughter. Fascinating. It is chunky, but I do want to get to it at some point. Um, of course, I haven't haven't read it yet. Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. I just I need it. I need it. I want it. I I'll get to it as soon as I can. August is going to be just a month of stuff that I really wanted to read this month, but got wrapped up in like other videos and other ideas. But I'm so excited. I can't wait. I will get to you. I promise. I promise I haven't forgotten about you. Okay, so next, actually, I've had this on my shelf for a little while. The Immortalists by Chloe Benjamin. It's probably my favorite book of all time. I don't know if I've ever talked about it on here, but it's uh, my friend is borrowing it right now. I love The Immortalists. It's It just makes my heart happy. That's another book that I really want to read by the end of the year. Have not read Chloe Benjamin's first book, which is The Anatomy of Dreams, so I would really like to read this by the end of the year. I do think this came out like a while ago. 
2018. So this is 2018. This is a book I picked up recently that I'm actually very excited about as well. This is Blacktop Wasteland by S.A. Cosby. My nose is itching so bad. I'm sorry. Um, this is Blacktop Wasteland, which has got an amazing cover as well. And I'm so excited about this. I think this is about a murder. I really don't know a whole lot, but again, anything like thriller at all to any extent legal thriller psychological thriller just thriller i you guys know me i really don't like to read too much into it so very excited cannot wait to get into this one it seems like it's going to be dark and scary and it's just i love the color like it's just really got a good like vibe to it to where i, I think i'm really going to enjoy it oh it takes place in virginia Husband, a father, a son, a business owner, and the best getaway driver east of the Mississippi. Wow. I'm so excited. And next is Forest of Souls by Lori M. Lee, who also is very nice and responded to me on Instagram. Um, I wanted to start this, but I got kind of intimidated. I actually did them on page like three, but um, we could start it over because I really don't remember a whole lot. But I got kind of intimidated because you guys know me i really don't read fantasy a whole lot but there's like a glossary and i just was like kind of nervous because i was like oh god i want to give like my full attention to this but also amazing cover i love to see it cannot wait to get into this whenever i get the chance which is hopefully gonna be august as well i have also had this for a little while and i can't wait to read it which is the city we became which is by nk jemison i have not read anything by her this is also a very chunky chunky boy but um definitely want to get into this the colors i mean it's fascinating it's fantastic we love to see it um so this i believe ooh, there's like a little i don't know if you guys can see that there's like a little tail or like an octopus tail coming out of the water there gross i think this is about a guy who gets off of a subway station and just completely forgets who he is or something like that and it's like a dystopian futuristic creep fest and I'm very excited about it especially with all of these tentacles coming out of the water here what is that about hopefully read this soon so Emily from the Spice Bookshelf just dropped this off for me today and I'm very excited to read it this is The Vanishing Half by Brett Bennett again don't know a whole lot about this I think this has to do with twins but I'm very excited to get into this I want to read it as soon as possible and my finger nails match the yellow but yeah very uh, very excited to get into this thank you Emily for dropping this off you guys again don't really do a whole lot of fantasy stories and stuff like that but this is just tremendous a song of rates and ruin by roseanne a roseanne a brown um i heard the premise of this and it sounded like a fantasy novel that wouldn't scare me away if that makes sense and i really just liked the cover but uh, basically this is about a woman We'll just read it because I'm going to butcher it. For Malik, the Sol Solstasia Festival is a chance to escape his war-stricken home and start a new life with the sisters in the prosperous desert city of Zaran. But when a vengeful spirit abducts Malik's younger sister, Nadia, as payment to enter the city, Malik strikes a fatal deal. Kill Karina, crown prince of Zaran, in exchange for Nadia's freedom. So yeah, he has to kill the queen in order to get his sister back but then like she has to like kill him in order to get something back as well i really can't wait to get into this this is so exciting no this came out in 2019 but this is um we have always been here by samara habib which is a muslim queer memoir and i got this recently at a local bookstore and i wanted to read it it's very small queen so I'm very excited to get into this as well. But that's aside from the other hundred, you know, or some bookshelf on my bookshelf. Um, bookshelves on my bookshelf, is that what I said? Uh, aside from the other hundreds of books on my shelf, this is what I've definitely been itching to read for a while. There's been a couple of Korean books that I've picked up recently too. Some of them are still coming in the mail. Um, I finally picked up my own copy of Vegetarian by Han Kang. Please Look After Mom by Kyun Suk Shin, which I've heard amazing things about, and plus the title just breaks my heart. Um, Shelter by Jung Yoong, which I am really wanting to get into. Um, but yeah, so I'm not reading these for my Koreathon, but there's a couple other stuff, uh, books that I'm reading for Koreathon. Um, but yeah, the vlog is gonna be fun. I'm very excited, I'm having a good time with it, and I'm also having a really good time off social media. So that is something to look out for. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you guys have any other recommendations for books that I might like. I do have Goodreads and Books Loft and all that, but I really don't keep up with it as much. 
I'm trying to just organize myself more instead of organize myself online more. So there's a lot that I need to read. There's a lot of books. I am almost done and I put it on the back burner for now, especially with this uh, vlog, but Veronica Roth's Chosen Ones. I'm actually really enjoying that book um, and I have maybe 150 pages left, but I put it on the back burner for now because to me it's very memorable. I really don't need to reread it even though I wouldn't have too much of an issue going back a couple, you know, 50 pages or so just to keep up, but so. So far I'm focusing on my July TBR, this that I just did. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you like what you see. Hit the bell so you're notified when I'm uploading next, which is just kind of whenever I feel like it. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye.